This is the new Miraco All-in-One 3D Scanner from Revelpoint, and as of making this video, it's available on Kickstarter right now. And they sent me one a little bit early to check out and make a video about. And it's almost like they took their range scanner and mini scanner and combined them together to make the Miraco. And it all comes nicely packed in this one small box. And this would be their first all-in-one or standalone scanner. And that means you can just use this as it is, without having to connect it to a computer or phone. That also means every time you use it, you don't have to set it up like all their other scanners. Which has actually been pretty nice and feels more like grabbing a point-and-shoot camera. And the one that I got came with quite a few accessories along with a fast charger, and you can get just about an 85% charge out of this in only 30 minutes. And you have about a 2 hour battery life out of the 5000 milliamp hour battery. And this whole unit only weighs about a pound and a half, which is definitely pretty lightweight, especially for being an all-in-one unit. When it comes to the display, it's a 2K OLED that is a touchscreen, and you're able to pivot it so you can see it better, or even flip it all the way around so you can scan yourself. And it looks like it's using some sort of custom RevoScan software, and it's a pretty clean looking setup, with a responsive screen. There's two view ports on the left hand side of the screen, so you're able to see the infrared camera and the color camera. There's also a helpful graph at the top that can show you if you're too close or too far away from what you're scanning. And with this being a handheld portable unit, you want to minimize your chance of dropping it, so it does come with a wrist strap that you can screw directly into the bottom of this. And it seems to work pretty well, but you're not limited to only use this in a handheld mode. And you can use that same mounting point for a tripod, which comes in really handy if you're scanning something on a turntable. And this scanner happens to come with one. And it has a few different control settings along with being powered by USB-C. And it also has has a marker topper, which is a little flimsy, and I'm sure this will work fine as it is, as long as you're not putting anything on the edges. But it's also almost impossible to center, so I designed a 3D printable plate for this, so you can easily center it, and you're going to be able to use the entire mat now. And all you have to do is stack everything on top of the turntable, and this prints out in two different pieces, so there's no supports whatsoever, you just have to glue them together. And this file is free to use, and you can download it from my printables. And I'll make sure to have a link to this in the description, along with links to a few of the 3D scans that I do as well, so you can check those out for yourself. And if you're scanning smaller objects, you don't have to use this top. So like this bus that came with the scanner. And you can see the scanner picks this up really well. And this middle port right here is basically a live preview of a scan. And you can even just move it around with your finger. And I'm just going to start a continuous scan, and pretty much just wait for this to do a full rotation. And there we go, we have a point cloud. But it does have a couple areas that we weren't able to scan. So we could just move the part and rescan it again. And as long as the scanner is able to recognize about 50% of what you already scanned, it will automatically be able to align everything. And there we go, we have a full scan of this from every angle now, which is great, but this is just a point cloud, and we have to actually process this and turn it into a mesh. And surprisingly, you're able to do all of this on the scanner itself. And I'm just using the one tap editing, so it does everything automatically for me. But you can definitely dive into the settings and change everything how you want them and get different results. And there we go, we have a mesh now, which definitely doesn't look bad, but everything is kind of smoothed over. And that's due to the one click editing. And it tends to use some very safe and processor friendly settings. And most of the time, using advanced settings will get you a better result. So let's scan something that's a little more difficult and multicolored. And you can see that it is is picking up the colors from this. But if we remove the color, you can see that it's having a hard time picking up the black areas, which is pretty normal for scanners like this. And you can even turn on a dark mode for scanning things like that, which does seem to help a bit, and if you need this for color scanning, I could see using this mode. But if you don't need the colors, or if your object is clear or shiny, you can use this 3D scanner spray. And this stuff works really well and evaporates in about 4 hours, so you're not going to have to worry about cleanup or ruining whatever you're scanning. And you can see how it leaves a really nice white matte finish on everything. And 3D scanners pretty much love this texture and color. And you can see how well it's picking up this scan now. And I did move the scanner a little bit to get a different angle, and you can see how the scan turns red. And that's just because it's not able to find an area to align to. And then after a couple seconds, it was. I just wanted to make sure to show that in action. And here's the final scan after doing all of the manual settings. And the first thing you might notice is it's a lot crisper, and it also has some holes in it. And that's mostly due to me not scanning this at every possible angle. So there's just missing data. And there are options in the software to fill all these holes. That usually does a pretty good job, but it definitely will not make it perfect. But I do feel like I was able to get a decent amount of detail out of this. And seeing that we are coming up on Halloween right now, I might as well scan a little ghost, just to see how well it will come out, and I'm going to 3D print it. And you can see the mesh for this came out looking really nice. And to print it, I'm using my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and it took around an hour to finish. So here's our original, and here's our 3D print. And I really didn't modify this in any way, and this is a direct file from the scanner, just turned into an STL. And it came out pretty much identical to the original. And because I didn't edit this at all, the bottom of this isn't really 3D printer friendly, and needed a lot of supports. And I'm going to edit and upload this file, so you can print it with a flat base. But the original will be downloadable as well. But if you're not able to use the turntable to scan things, you can always use this marker mat. That way the scanner has something to keep track of, and will end up giving you better results when scanning.
but sometimes it's even better to just hang something in midair. So you can pretty much scan everything in one go. And doing that, I was able to get a pretty decent scan of this mud flap, but it's not without some flaws. That will definitely need to be fixed. And this is going to be the case with just about any 3D scanner. So you're going to want to learn how to use 3D software. Something like Blender will work, and it's free. And after some very minimal cleanup, I'm going to get this set up for 3D printing. It's going to take eight and a half hours. And I'm going to be printing this on my Creality K1 Max, because it's just way too big for the bamboo printer. But it looks like I had no problem printing it, and I just need to remove all the supports. So here's the original part, and here is the 3D scanned and printed one, which honestly looks pretty spot on to the original, besides some of the areas that I didn't clean up. And of course I had to do a test fit on the car to make sure it fit, and it does, just like the original one does. And since I'm in the garage with my car, let's see how it does scanning something a little bit bigger, like the entire engine bay. And here's the actual real-time scanning speed, which is pretty slow using the dark function and doing this large area. But it's also able to scan a large area all at once. But let me speed up the footage, seeing that this did take about a minute and a half to do. And there we go, and not too bad for just a minute worth of scanning. And I didn't do any type of preparation work for this, I just opened the hood and scanned. But there is a slight defect in this. And this seems to happen when the scanner loses tracking, and then finds it again, but it's a little off. So you'll have doubles of things. So I'm going to go through and scan this again real quick, and this time I'll be processing it through my computer, seeing that you can use the scanner to get all the information, and then send it over to your computer, over Wi-Fi, or through USB. And you can see nothing is doubled up now. And another feature I haven't shown yet that's really handy is being able to do single shots. So if an area is hard to get to, or if you just want more control over your scan, you can do it shot by shot. And the scanner will even warn you if things aren't matching up properly, so you can readjust and try again. And here's the point cloud after just a few shots. And let's say I just needed the airbox area. I can delete all of this, and then fuse my point cloud together, and then turn it to a mesh. And it is missing data in a few spots, but it's still amazing to me that I was able to get this in just a few shots that took under a minute to capture. So overall, I really do like this scanner. And with it being a standalone unit, this is going to be my go-to, seeing that there's no setup and it does a great job at scanning things. And being able to move the screen to a different position really makes it easy to scan stuff that's lower to the ground and being able to see the screen still. And like I said at the beginning of this video, Revo Point just started their Kickstarter campaign for this scanner, and you'll be able to save up to 40% of the retail price of this. And as you can see, this isn't the first time that Revo Point has ran a Kickstarter campaign, so I'm not too worried about them actually delivering their goods. And if you're wondering about all the specs about this scanner, here they are. Feel free to pause here or even take a screenshot. Well, I think that's it for this video. Let me know what you think of this scanner in the comments below, and if you're interested in actually getting one. And I'm going to make sure to link to everything I used in this video along with some of the scans I did. Well, I guess that's it, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!